Following the Zulu victory over the British at Isandwana, a unit of Zulus led by Prince Dabulamanzi crossed the Buffalo River into British territory where they targeted a small British camp called Rook's Drift. The camp was a mission station which was being used by the British as a supply depot. Rook's Drift had a storehouse and a small makeshift hospital. The British forces consisted of about 140 men. The British had made defensive walls of grain bags and soldiers were posted all around the camp and also in the hospital and storehouse. The commanders of the camp were Lieutenant Chard and Lieutenant Bromhead. The Zulu army had about 4,000 men. The unit was present at Isantuana but did not fight because they were held in reserve. The battle started with a Zulu charge in the direction of the hospital. The British rifles were able to inflict big casualties on the Zulus and stalled their initial attack. To avoid the same fate as the previous advance, the next wave of Zulus began to go around the hospital and attacked the other side of the British camp. This area would be under constant attack by the Zulus. Although the main weapon of the Zulus was the spear, they did have limited access to some old muskets and the British now started to come under fire from Zulu snipers posted on the high ground of the Oscarburg Hill. The Zulu shooting killed a number of British soldiers, but it was not a sustained attack and in response, British riflemen were able to target and eliminate the threat. The number of Zulu attackers was increasing and some were able to break through the British line of defence. Whenever large groups of Zulus force their way into the camp, they are met with bayonet charges which force back their advance. More Zulus were now joining the attack. The British had constructed an improvised wall in the camp using heavy biscuit boxes. When the Zulus finally broke through in numbers, the British retreated behind this defence and immediately opened fire from this position and killed the first wave to enter the compound. The Zulus now tried to force their way into the hospital. The main door had been barricaded shut and the occupants had to quickly find a way out of the building. When they finally gained entry, the British had to retreat room by room until they were able to escape through an open window. At some point during this encounter, the roof caught fire and the building started to burn down. Of the 11 hospital patients, 9 were able to escape. The third wave of Zulus began attacking the camp in the area in front of the storehouse where all the British now were. The battle had been going on for so long that it was starting to get dark, but with the glow created by the hospital fire, the British were still able to see their opponents. The Zulus were now on all sides, but persistent British rifle volleys inflicted major losses for the Zulus. The assaults against the British continued until late in the evening, but eventually the sustained attacks faded away. The next day, the Zulus reappeared but seeing British reinforcements in the distance, they did not attack again. At the end of the battle, the British had lost about 17 soldiers, but the Zulu losses amounted to over 800 men. This was a victory for the British. 11 of the soldiers that served at Rook's Drift were awarded the Victoria Cross Medal, more than for any single battle before or since, but there would be many more battles before the Anglo-Zulu War would be over.